Is this Mr. Jody? This is him. How are you doing? Doing great, man. How are you? I'm good. This is Cody. I talked to you yesterday about maybe talking to me for a little bit. Yeah. I didn't know if you had a time to talk for a little while. Well, all I've got is time. Well, uh, you know, that's the most valuable thing we got in our day and time. Hey, every morning I wake up, I'm proud. Hey, I understand that. I'm The older I get, the more I appreciate it. Oh, you're still probably a young man. Yes, sir. Well, I'm in my mid-30s, so. Hey, I, I was in my mid-30s just a few years ago. Hey, time now, flies. 40 years now, you know. Yes, sir. Time flies. When you're having a good time, it does. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Got it. All right. Well, I was wondering if you want to talk about these squirrel dogs a little bit. Yeah, buddy. All right. When when you ready, I'll ask the first question. Go ahead. All right. All right, guys. Today I got Mr. Jody Mullins on. Mr. Jody, tell us a little about yourself and where you're from. Okay. My name is Jody Mullins. I'm 73 years old. I'm from Reed Scott, Tennessee. Uh, now I live in southern Arkansas, a little old bitty town called Bearden. Been here 30 years. Uh, first moved to Arkansas when I was 30 years old. I stayed seven years, moved back to Tennessee, the Lebanon, Tennessee. Moved, I stayed seven, I stayed seven years, and then turned around and moved back to Arkansas. And I've been here ever since. I got you. And you're retired, is that correct? Yes, I'm retired uh, uh, from a Caterpillar dealership here in, in Arkansas. Uh, actually got out when I was 62 and uh, enjoy in, everything. Getting to enjoy the retirement. Yes. I got you. Uh, I always ask, just for the people that don't know, what kind of timber or what, what's the terrain like in the area you're hunting or you're in, rather? Okay. Oh, we're, we're in real flat country where we hunt, uh, real swampy country, a lot of standing water in places, uh, big timber, big jack timber, uh, the, the timber itself, of course, it's like everywhere else. They they, they think they got to cut every tree in the country now, you know. But uh, a lot of vines. Uh, when we got squirrel, we have big squirrel numbers. I mean, uh, of course, it's like everything else. You, you, you've got to have a good dog to begin with, but uh, you got to have good country to hunt in, too. Yes, sir. So y'all, y'all got a bunch of squirrels. Fox squirrels, gray squirrels, what y'all got? Most everything we got is gray. We do kill a few fox squirrels, especially on the rivers. Uh, one of the main leases I hunt on is bordered by the Washita River, and there's some fox squirrels on it. And uh, uh, out of a hundred squirrels, we might kill six or seven fox squirrels. Uh, kill kill a black fox squirrel every occasion. I got you. We we only got grays just about around here. If you kill a a fox squirrel. It's a trophy. Oh, this this uh, a fox squirrel much easier to tree too. I mean, they 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 just do better. Uh, it's harder for them. Yeah, yeah. Harder for them to get in the hole and get away, ain't it? Yep. Yep. I got right. you. So, let's start from the beginning. What was your first interaction with a hunting dog? It can be any kind of hunting dog. Well, I was born into a family of dog raisers, uh, but my first hunting dog, I bought a, a little registered beagle with my buddy uh, I hunted with when I was 12 years old. Uh, five colors is what I give for her. Uh, in fact, I've got a picture on the mantle here of her. Uh, that's how I started out hunting. We was rabbit hunters, beagle hound hunters. I had beagles all my life uh, until I started with the squirrel dogs. Yes, sir. 
Them them rabbit dogs are a lot of fun, ain't they? Yes, yes, I had them. And I always, you know, I, I wanted the good dogs, the good jump dogs, the dogs that run from the front of the pack. I didn't want anything to walkie-talkie type dogs. I wanted them to go, and, you know, I like get that rabbit around, kill him, let's go get another one somewhere. Yes, sir. I got you. So you started off hunting with beagles, rabbit hunting, until you got into squirrel dogs. And what was the first squirrel dog you ever hunted with? Okay, the first uh, the way I started these dogs, uh, well, I lived next door to Willie Nelson. Well, well, before we get to this, had you ever squirrel hunted what? before you got into them? No. no so, Never so your very first them. interaction is the story you're finna tell. Okay. I never, never, never hunted with a squirrel. I still hunted, you know, and, and, and I lived in Ridgetop, Tennessee. Real yes, hilly, rough country, you know. And uh, I had, I raised pedigreed, pencil, rover, pigeons, show rovers. And somebody had given Willie Nelson a bunch of Maine coon cats. Big old, big old. They looked like a coon, colored about like a coon, and it was big. We turned them all loose at his farm. He had a 240 acre farm behind us. And when he got rid of all the turkeys and the hogs and the ducks and everything he had over there, them things just went wild. And they was massacring my pigeons. They'd come at night, and anything they could reach through the wire and hang a claw in, they'd just suck it to the wire and kill it. So mm-hmm. I wanted something I wanted something to, to protect my pigeons. I seen I had in the farm bureau paper. Uh mountain fast. So I contacted this guy, he is fifty years old, doing the middle aged crazy, marrying a little old twenty five year old girl, moving losing his farm and moving to town. He's the last one of his family that had these dogs and he showed me a picture of his granddaddy with him. He yes, said, sir. I know we've had him for three generations of people. So I got to the turn them loose, started, they started about six, seven months old, they started training cats, coons, and possums. Uh, they'd get me up two or three times a week, something to eat, and I'd kill it for them, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. Then they started treeing squirrels and groundhogs when they was probably they was probably ten or eleven months old, and uh, that's when I started killing squirrels with a dog. And uh, everybody seen them wanted one, you know. So I cut I I, I rode over practically three states looking for a super nice stud dog, to, you know that was. And I just couldn't find anything I like, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Not the looks, and, and I just, I, I've always been too particular, you know. And uh, yes, so I contacted this guy that I got the original dog from, and he found me a tight cousin to these two females I had. And I bought him as a broke dog. He was about two years old, smart as the top, coon dog, squirrel dog deluxe. His name was Smoke. And that's what I started this line of dogs with. So you started the line with a dog you found and the dogs you got from uh, an old guy that decided he'd rather run off and live in the city. Yeah. Yeah, he was like that. He was doing the middle age crazy, and so I got the last. In fact, this is the last litter of dogs he ever raised, and I got two puppies out of that. And then I got him to find me this cousin, and that's what I started them with. And uh, I, you know, I studied these pigeon pedigrees. And the winning is man in the country. We're talking, talking about big competition. We're not talking about going where there's 20, 30 sub one animals. We're going to 1,000 bird shows, 40 exhibitors, 
maybe 20 different states represented. This one guy was just dominating. And he just happened to be the guy that sort of got me started. So I started studying all his pedigrees. and He sort of took me under his wing. And everything he had was a family. Every bird he had was kin to, kin to each other, every one of them. Yes, sir. And he just called it a family of birds. He said, that's the only way I could ever get consistent. You know, raising anything consistent. And that's what I modeled my dog breeding over, uh, was the pigeon pedigrees. I bred them just, just like he bred the pigeons, uh, tight kin folks, kin folks on all four sides. And that's, that's where I come up with the idea that I listen. If I listened to the old timers, I never would have had any. Oh, you can't breed to that. They got the same granddaddy. Yes, sir. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, you know their their cousins. Are, uh, they hadn't started line I breeding back then. A, yeah, I knew it had to be a better way because I seen so much junk out there. You know. Mm-hmm. I got you. So this is off topic, but you have struck my curiosity. What exactly was you doing in these pigeon shows? You they just they look at them, or did you actually? Comp- it was a show confirmation, uh, and they judged uh, you judged on station, uh, body condition, feather condition, uh, and people would say, "Well, man, I when all pigeons look alike to I me." Mean, first off, they. They don't. If you'd never seen a roller show roller pigeon, I could put three pigeons in the pen, a good one, a mediocre one, and a sorry one, and I guarantee you, you'd pick them in order. You saw, hey, that's the best one, that's the second best one, and that's the sorry one. It's never failed, man, people that didn't know anything about them, you know. But if you got a dog for eye, uh, eye for a good looking dog or something like that, uh, same difference. Just it's just like looking at a beauty contest, you know. Yes, sir. So so it's more or less a bench show for dogs, but for pigeons. Yeah. Same okay. thing. It's the same thing, just a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more competition. Uh, I understand. All right. So that that story gives me multiple questions. You said. You as neighbors with Willie Nelson? Yes, Willie Nelson. All right. <laughs> he, he sang a little bit of country music. Yes, sir. I, I've actually heard of him. I sure have. All right. My next question is, Is what did the dogs size-wise and, and color, like do they look like they do now or through breeding have the looks changed or the body? Through selective breeding, I have changed them to pretty well exactly what I like. I put a little more size on them. Uh, I made them a little bit prettier. They was good-looking dogs to begin with. Uh, the colors are going to be black or red. Uh, with some white points on them. And every, occasionally, I raise them. One with a whole lot of white, maybe a red head or a black head, maybe one or two out of a hundred. Uh, and the, probably the best dog I've had in years and years and years is a, a funny looking dog. She's sort of not spotted, but got a black blanket on her with, with lightning stripes like running up into her. But uh, she'll. She's ever thrown a puppy that looks like her. Uh, everybody wants a puppy that looks like her. The first time I bred her, she had eight puppies, not enough white on all eight of them to cover up your fingernail. And the next time I bred her, she had uh, she had two black white trims, two red white trims. Uh, Shane Mason got one of the black and white ones. Called him Traveler. Wade Hildebrand had one. He called him. Uh, called, no, he called him uh, Postman. Yes, sir. I've seen pictures uh, of Postman. Yeah, he I, he died actually in last summer in Tennessee. I think he was hunting him at night. I don't know if he got too hot or not. 
and I kept the two red and white ones. I got one called Poison, one called Prim. Now, uh, what size was the original dogs you was hunting before you have well, bred? They was about twenty pound dogs. Uh, that's what I want my females now to weigh twenty, twenty four pounds. I want my males a little heavier, twenty five to thirty. Uh, like down here, we got a lot of water, and it, it it just helps when they have to drag that water a lot of times. And uh, I like for a dog to be able to hunt all day long. I I, I want him to out hunt me for sure. I want to be able to eat the sandwich. I can't do it anymore, but used to we'd eat, sit down and eat a sandwich at lunch, and drink a bottle of water, and then we'd go back to the same dogs and hunt them all the way to dark. Uh, and be sure to carry a light, because if you didn't have a snap on them at that last tree, you'd go start coon hunting at dark. <laughs> that was one of my questions I was going to ask, is have you coon hunted them, or was it strictly squirrel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they coon, they'll treat coon, I'll give them coons, of course, possums, bobcats, they made a lot of hogs. Uh, I've tried breaking them off of hogs, but it, it's... I've never had a shot collar or a tracking collar for a few time. I mean, I holler and stomp and throw and kick and wheel. Uh, I just finally give up. Just go on there and kill a hog and get it over with. <laughs> so you still don't hunt with? Do you? Do you currently hunt? Are you still hunting right now? You hunt now? Are you hunting to this day, or have you slacked off on that? Oh yeah. I've slacked up a bunch. I can still hunt a good half a day. Uh, start, you know, early in the morning, I can hunt the lunch, but I can't hunt that evening. Most of the time, I can go back the next day, though. Uh, I feel good enough. I got a left knee that really bothers me a bunch, but if it went for the left knee, I'd, I'd still be going. Yes, sir. So, so you're still not using any sort of tracking system? No. <laughs> I got you. Um, so they started off as red or black, 20-ish yep. pound dogs, and I assume under 16, 18 inches? Yeah, that's about 15 inches. Okay. Uh, and the average on, on the beginning, uh, and very, I'd say very little white, but I even off the original dogs, I throw a... Uh, one was just about snow white with a black black head or red head and uh and actually the guy that I got these from told me about he told me he said you uh, most all these dogs was like say solid, no no white trim and he said years and years ago I throwed a white dog that had a little black spot around his eye and he said I didn't like it so I give it to the kids up the road and uh, yeah, I come by one day a year or two later, and he said they were skinning a pile of squirrel on the front porch. I stopped and asked him, and they said, well, we killed all of them with that little, that little dog I called a snowball that you give us. And uh, he said, occasionally one of one I bought, he, he bought her back, and he said, but she never throwed any, any light-colored dog, but occasionally he said, want to pop out back now, you know, back through the blood. Yes, sir. All right. So you started your line of dogs in 1970-ish. 74. 74. Okay. What, you just wanted to start the the Mullins Feist, or was there a reason you – was there? I assume the Mountain Feist was – or there was some sort of Feist registry back then, or was there not? That's, uh, that's exactly right. Back, back up in the hills – like that when I got these dogs. Uh, he said, there's only two kind of feist in these mountains. And he said, there's mountain feist and there's barnyard feist. And I said, I didn't know nothing about feist. And I said, what's the, what the barnyard feist? He said, oh, everybody got them. Every barn you go to, every house you go to, it's got the inside, it's got, got them. He said, they're little, little ear stand up ear spotted dogs and they said they kill rats and possums and always digging after something. And he said they every yard. But he said these mountain fasts are, are, are just different. He said they've been raised to, to put meat on the table, you know. And, uh, yes, sir. He said that's what we always dealt with. 
Hmm. So, so you just decided that the feist you was going to have was you didn't want them to be mountain feist, so you didn't want to yeah. register them that way. You just decided to start a mullet's feist. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't start mullet's feist. I never said mullet's feist. The over the years, what happened? These dogs were so recognizable because they such a tight family dog. People say, oh, that's one of them Mullins Feist. They'd see one somewhere. That's a Mullins Feist. And Mullins Feist. And for long, it's just what everybody called them. You know, when they seen them. But that's a Mullins Feist. So, uh, that's the name. I guess I adopted it then, you know. Yes. But I always called them Mountain Feist. But now there's so many things they call Mountain Feist that it's unbelievable to me, you know. Uh, I believe if it meets the height and weight requirements, you can about single register anything, can't you? Yes, you can. I, the, when I the, go back to the first store where I was looking for a dog to breed to, I found a dog. Nice dog. Squirrel dog. Good looking dog. Yellow. Uh, pretty head. Ears turned down on him. I mean, muscled up dog, and I got to asking the guy. He said, "Well, he's a registered bound feist." I said, "I said, well, what is it? What? Tell me what he is. What's his blood and all that?" And he was a four way cross. He was a quarter beetle lamb, a quarter rat tear, a quarter short haired spitz, and a quarter mountain cur. <laughs> he was mixed. So, so actually, he didn't have a drop of fire blood in him, but uh, he was he was a good looker. I mean, he looked good and and, and was a nice dog, of course. But you, you don't want to breed to nothing like that because consistency is what you're looking for in breeding. You, you're not. Uh, when I started with these dogs, I get about one out of ten a really a nice dog. Okay. Three, four, you know, three or four that was three squirrels and three or four that wasn't worth nothing. And now I get out of ten dogs, I get three or four cracker jacks. Three or four that's really, really nice, and then maybe get a couple, a couple that's not, not so good, you know. Uh, yes. Most puppies are going to develop according to who gets them. Yes, sir. How much time you, you invest in them? Yeah, if you don't invest your time, I'm talking about time, I'm not talking about putting him in a pen and releasing him until he's nine months old and then take him out yeah, on a week, weekend. If, if you don't have time, most people don't need a puppy. If you can only go on Saturday to hunt a dog, you, just, you don't need to hunt them. You don't need to. You don't need a puppy. Just save up and get your wife, give you some money, and buy, buy, buy a dog and a tree of squirrel, you know. Yes, sir. I got you. So you didn't set out to start a pedigree, but it ended up – it is a pedigree, is it not, or is it just a name? Yeah, it's the Mullet Spice Registry is out of Missouri. Okay. Uh, How did that come about? Let's go that route. Mom has been doing it a long, long time, and uh, actually she's – Called a bunch of people over the years trying to foster register dogs, you know. Uh, out of dogs that's been dead and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but most of these registry, if you'll, if you'll sit there and copy your wife's poodle pedigree and send it to some of these registries and call it a Mullet's Feist, you'll get that Mullet's Feist papers on it. Huh. And, uh, that's hurting them in a lot of people because they don't. They don't do their homework. They don't study, uh, you know, nothing. Uh, they just take people's word on what, what's what, you know. Yes, sir. What What about uh, so when you when you decided you wanted to start the Mullins fast, you just had how, how did that? I'm sorry. When you decided that you I, was going to take the name and start a pedigree. Yeah, I got in touch with that lady, or she got in touch with me. I can't remember. And, and decided that's that's the way I wanted to go because I tried actually back when UK C started registering these fives, they wanted to do the Mullins Fives registry. 
the first dog they let in was a half mullet spice, and that I, I never I never put anything in. I said I got I got to do something else, you know, keep these dogs as pure as I can keep them, you know. Yes, sir. And so I got in touch with the the mullet spice register, and like say she might have contacted me, I can't remember, and that's where I started with, and I've stayed ever since. Oh, is there any way that, or do you keep up with how many Mullins Fass have been registered? I'm sure there's a lot. I didn't know if you kept up with how many had been every year. You find out how many he's done. No, no I don't. I, I don't keep up with, with what's run through the registry. That's, she strictly owns that and controls it. She, uh, the got nothing to do with me. That's the way I want it. Okay. I got you. So, them first dogs, did they have uh, flop ears or did they have prick ears? You know, the oh, ones. Yeah. No, they had turned over ears. Turned over ears. All right. Yeah, I had a red one. I, I think red, yellow, and a black one. Now. And, uh, that's, uh, and that's the black one was a. Uh, on the day. Marking a squirrel dog, she'd be a five, six, seven thousand dollar squirrel dog, and her sister was probably a five or six hundred dollars dog. But her sister, the sorrier of the two, was the reproducer. She rep- reproduced the other one, dang near ten over. Uh, well, wow. it was unbelievable. The black dog is actually. You can't trace any pedigree I got back to her. Uh, I don't have anything running. Yeah, all of them run back to the yellow gilp. The old yellow gilp's got them in it. Uh, she, was, she was the reproducer. So the the sorry dog, as you call it, yeah, you can it. trace back to it, but the show enough good squirrel dog, you, you didn't breed yeah. it much. Just it, nothing would... I, I, bred, I bred a bunch of puppies at first for a bunch of them, but... She wouldn't, she, she'd throw one to that other dog throwing 10 good ones. It was unbelievable. It was just, uh, I could, I could never raise anything. I wanted to move forward with this. My, my theory on thinking is sort of like the pigeons. You've got to move forward. You've got to be getting better. This has got to be better. This is everything got to be a little better. Be moving forward. Yes, Don't sir. try to stand still. So, man, I got a really nice dog. He's done this. Keep keep moving forward. Uh, try to raise your odds on raising all them dogs. Trying to get him a little a little faster, a little bigger. Might get everything about him a little better. You know. Always be moving, moving forward. Never, never stand still on them. Now, um, back then, in 1974, 1975, I know you said you started in 74. Yeah. It, did the Mountain Feist, I assume that was a registry, you said it was that, or just regular barn, was that Mountain Feist actually a registry back then? Or did they just call yeah. them Mountain Feist? They have actually, let's see here. I'll open my old book here if you've got a minute. And I'll oh, tell I got you plenty of time. Still got it. Where I was going with this question, I don't know if you can still hear me. Where I was going with that is, is back then, did they have a size tolerance or has that been adopted in the latter years? They, they did have uh, some guidelines, but man, I don't want to get flagged to you. I can't remember exactly what all of it was. I got you. Uh, here's here's one of the older ones. Uh, United Squirrel Dog Registry. That's that's one of the oldest ones. Okay. Uh, and then I think here's another one. I think it was 
was even before that, maybe. Universal Kennel Club. Does them have dates on them? Yes, this Universal Kennel Club. Was this date this dog was registered was December the eighth, nineteen eighty. I got you. That's that's quite a few years ago. What if like a universal kind of club, I'm sure they you know, they been gone forever. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it was one more of them, but I can't. I can't remember, like I said, this. the United Squirrel Dog and the Universal Kennel Club was the two that I got I've you. actually got some paper still stuck back here in the back of my book. Now, did you dual register your dogs when you started, or did you just... No, I don't, but now a lot of people do that hunts in these hunts, uh, hunts in these, uh, these money hunts, uh, in fact, uh, Shane Mason, he's he dual registered my poison dog in the NSD. Mm-hmm. We put him up. Uh, I'm not big into, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with competition stuff. I've just never been much in it. Uh, but he's DNA profile certification and all that, you know, where if he gets a puppy that wins some money or something, uh, uh, me and Shane get some money back out of it some way. I, yes, I don't sir. understand all that stuff. <laughs> I'm just old country boy and likes to go squirrel hunting. I got you. So back to, I want to. I'm, I'm still wanting to talk about these original dogs. Did they have dock tails? The arm of the original dogs was long tail. Okay, do you dock tails now? Yes, I dock. If, if it hits the ground, it's not natural bob tail, I dock them. Okay. Uh, the, actually, the bob tail come in. I raised a little bitty black cur dog one time. That was bob tail. It was a super dog. And I sold him to a friend of mine in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And one of the times I was trying to get out of dogs and not raise any dogs, I had loaned him some chips, and he turned around and raised two puppies. And I come through one time, and he said, hey, here's your puppies. I got your puppies ready. And uh, <laughs> so those two chips were actually, I'm not talking about 40-pound mountain curve, I'm talking about a 25-pound mountain curve daddy. Uh, And their mama was a mullet spice. I took those two jilts, raised one round out of them, kept those, and those ended up, in fact, I... Uh, a guy come through, and there used to be a guy, he's dead now, his name was Peanut Baby. And I guess he was sort of a buyer for him or something. But I sold him seven dogs with one lump. Uh, yellow bobtail male in the bunch and six females, and those two females were in the bunch. So they ended up at Kenneth Baby's house. And that's where the bobtail come in. If, if on paperwork now, they might be one sixty fourth mountain cur blood in them. Okay. All right. Well, they were over the years. You have line bred, I think is the proper term. Line bred these dogs to be bigger and more suit you, correct? So you, they've gotten bigger yeah, over no, the years. I, oh, and I do inbreed. Uh, occasionally, one of the best crosses I ever had was a brother sister cross. But yes, sir. Uh, half brothers, half sisters. Uh, they say that they either really good or really bad. Well, I've, I've had really good luck. Uh, 
and a lot of people, I had a guy tell me one time, I, pr- I bred a, a, a dog back to his daughter. That's the hardest cross in hell. I said, is he? He said, yeah, I raised five puppies out of them, and none of them was, none of them was great. Uh, first off, you, you've got to have a number to pick from. You can't say five and stop. Well, if he had raised 30 more, the next 30 he raised might have been super. Yes, you know, he, yes he, didn't have, raise, he, he didn't have you know, a big enough quantity. You don't have enough quantity to have a, a pick in front, you know, like a, I'd say, well, you know, I raised the black dog out two red dogs. Yeah, and that, I raise it occasionally, you know? Yes, sir. But, you might raise the next 50, it might all be red. You can't say, well, I'm going to raise, put two red dogs together and raise black dogs. Uh, you got to, you got to use a little bit of common sense. Uh, yes, sir. I'm with you. Now, when you first started, you started with that, that male dog named Smoke and these two yeah. females. Did you outcross very often at the beginning to try to get... No. So you, no. I assume you dread bred daughter to father and mother to son, and then once they started coming, you got into cousins bred, and so on. Yeah, pretty well any way you can, tight, tight bread, you know. Uh, and, and just and always staying in the in, in the same the same tight family. Uh, and, and you've got to you've got to watch, and you cannot use anything that's not close to perfect. You just of course you can get them perfect. That's what what I'm still looking for. But you can't breed anything with a fault, uh, especially in a line bred inbred family or something, because you're gonna get you, if you do, you're gonna get a bunch more of it. <laughs> yes, sir. Now. Did you ever, uh, let's see here, did you ever, out of all the breeding you've done, did you ever figure out like a mother or a dad, daughter, or half mother, half sister, or whatever, I'm, I'm going with that. Did you ever find a consistency that seemed to be a better ratio in that aspect? Well, I, I like, uh, I'm strong on the mama side, and usually, I'm not saying that's that's the right one. I but like a half brother, half sister crossed off the same mama is always worked good for me. Uh, one of the best crosses I had was a half brother, half sister cross. Uh, the uh, I throw seventeen dogs out of that one cross, and it was all. Ooh. Not only they was nice, nice dogs, they were super reproducers. One of them was a dog I sold to Alton Pate. He raised uh, all the champ dogs over in Arkansas. And uh, he raised another dog that uh, all went to a guy in Missouri that put the squirrel dogs. Uh, oh, his name was slip, slip my mind right now, but. I got you. So, so you always uh, life ha- liked half brother, half sister. I like a half brother, half sister cross. Do you think uh, that the tra- the have you noticed anything? Which all this is opinion and speculative, but do you think that they get more traits from their mama or their dad, or or have you noticed anything like that? I, I, my my opinion, they get traits. From both sides, it's a fifty-fifty. Uh, I I can't tell any difference, uh, but you know, a lot of people say, "Man, you know, your females dominate your puppies." And, uh, you, a lot of people, oh, your male and all. I'd rather breed to a good male. Don't worry about the female; just breed to a good. Well, you better breed a super nice female to a super nice male. Yes, sir. You... Then, Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying you was breeding the best to the best. The best to the best. 
the best. I mean, the, and, and, and look forward all the time. Now, that's the reason these people that keep seeming, you know, don't get me wrong, I've had, I've had super dogs, you know, uh, the old slick dog that daddy to uh, Wade Hildebrand's. I think he won one world champion a couple times. He's fill, fill up a book thing there with what he's won. Uh, yes, sir. This dog, he called him Diesel. Yes, sir. But people say, why didn't he save semen off of that dog? Man, I, I, I'm looking for something better, you know? I'm looking for the next. I'm looking for him suit up a little bit more, you know? That's, I'm going to go forward. <laughs> Yeah, so you've never had a dog collected then? No, never. Okay. All right. Never. So how does the line of dogs that you have, how do they hunt? Do they hunt by nose, sight, ears, or all? All. Oh, super big noses on them. Uh, that's anything can tree a squirrel. Uh, and a lot of this stuff trees them by sight or something's red hot, but the, the difference between a real squirrel dog is a dog can work a bad, bad track up that's been gone quick. They can't mess around on it. they got to be quick, get over there, get treed. Big winged noses. They, dogs that can win squirrels and tree squirrels and other dogs don't even know in the woods. Uh, that's that kind of dog can go out here and kill these 60, 70 squirrels a day with it. Super, super nose makes the difference. Yes. Or hunting. I, I want him digging. If he's not digging when he leaves throwing leaves, I don't want him. Uh, if he's not a natural starting dog, I've never trained a dog in my life. When I started, if I turned them loose, run loose, if they didn't start training and I start killing game to them, they didn't stay. Uh, that's the reason I still do that. I've still never trained a dog. I've turned them loose, and when they start training, I, then I start shooting the meat to them. <laughs> if I have to walk him, I call him a walk and talk dog. You have to walk him and talk to him. Get on in there, boy. Get <laughs> that squirrel. Get on I ain't going to crawl. So you don't like to walk dogs over squirrels? Walk and talk. Why do you want a dog like that? You quit walking, he quits hunting. Uh I agree right. with you. I, I'm just saying. I I have seen a feist or two. I'm not saying your line, but I have seen a feist or two that you had to walk. But you like them to get gone. Get How well, deep do get, these dogs hunt? Well, some of them are going there pretty deep. Now, they the squirrels. Uh, me and Shane was that last, last year. We had a bad, we had a down squirrel this year. We had making the same round we usually kill 30 to 45 on with killing 10 or 12 uh, 600 yards uh, that's pretty well max uh, I got you yeah. so so they're not hunting under your feet normally not no, no. normally not no. inside or do they uh, cut the no, woods up in sight uh, we, we hunt them we turn them out if, if they head north, we take off that direction. And we're not taking off trying to make them hunt. We're taking up sh- sh- cut the distance. When they go in there 300 yards and tree, well, we're already walking there 100. So we're, we cut the distance a little on them, you know, put put a few more squirrels out on them. Yes, sir. Well, I didn't know if, if they hunted and checked all around you 360 degrees and then started moving out or if they kind of gone out of sight at the beginning. No, they go, they move on. I mean, I mean, they go on now. Don't get me wrong. When he leaves out in the front of you, wide open, and he's gone. You say, well, he might tree off to your right 200 yards or 300. You know, he done made a, made a big loop or winded something. And, uh, it's yep. not just a strictly a straight line. I don't. I've never kept nothing in straight line uh, that gets you in trouble. Uh, yes, sir. Real easy to breed that into a line of dogs. A straight line? Uh, straight liners. I mean, they, they don't have a left or a right. They, they're not incapable of going left or right. They just got to go one degree on the compass. That's all they go. And, uh, 
you see that? There's quite a few dogs now that, that's got that bred into them, you know. Yes, sir. I can show you one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can show you a cur dog. He he does good. Yeah. He he turns when he smells I something. I didn't, I didn't call no names now. Oh, well, hey, I, I I agree. I I'll I'll call my dog at a fault if he's got a fault. I mean, now I will say this: if if he wins something, I can see him turn and start like if the wind's blowing from the left to the right. And he you gets know, out there so far, I could see him on the Garmin with it. You know, you said you don't hunt with him, but on my Garmin, I can see him turn left and start running into the wind until he gets to where he wants to be. But as far as he don't go 300 yards forward and then turn left 300 yards and then come back towards me, he don't he don't cut the woods up like that. No, there's a lot like that. I, 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 people coming out here to hunt, I, you know, I don't know. First off, they say, oh, if I had squirrels like y'all got, I could kill those big numbers. Well, yes, sir. We tell them to come down. We want to go hunt with them. We like to see dogs, good dogs, you know. But they find out that's not really the case. Uh, we've had people that come, they come in here and hunt, and... Some of them never take the dog back out of the box at, at lunchtime. Uh, <laughs> you done embarrassed them? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I, I don't know what's wrong with them. I, I don't know. I don't know if they're wanting to rest their dog or uh, they don't. They they just maybe think our dog hunts a little better without theirs. Maybe a bit. I had a buddy. And he's his name is Jimmy Neighbors in North Carolina. Great guy. He come down here with a pretty high part dog. He'd been winning some hunts. Fast dog. And, uh, we, we went hunting. And, uh, at lunch, uh, we come in, eat a little lunch here at the house, stuff like that. I loaded our dogs out of my turn pins and went to load dogs up. I said, get your dog, put him in the right side of the box there. And he said, I'm not taking him, taking him back. I said, what? No, I've had enough. What? He said, I did. I can't remember how, what he did for him. Pretty big money. And he mm-hmm. says, uh, he'll never be hunted again. I said, what? He said, I'm going to sell him. I'm going to get home and sell him. He said, I, I found out what I'm looking for. And he he actually come down here. Um Dog as good a dog as I ever raised. He bought her when she was 11 months old. She went on and made a super dog. 15 hour drive to his house. He brought her back. Bred her to my dog. My main stud dog. And that was the cross the slick dog was out of. You, uh, the Your slick dog or the triple slick traveler? My slick dog. What was her name? Oh, daddy. He's the daddy the diesel and the traveler and the postman dog. What was that yeah. Jip's name? Do you remember? Uh, her name was Sissy. Sissy? Sissy. She was a red and white trim Jip. That's where the white trim come in from. Did he comp hunt yeah. her? No, he did. It took her with a... It was a dog over... Her, I remember the dog's name was Brandy. And the guy nicknamed the co-hunter or half owner was Tree Loop. And I think he's dead now, but he draw her on. She had a bunch of big titles on her, and he draw her at a hunt. And uh, at the end of the hunt, they wanted to know what kind of dog he was hunting. He said, what kind of dog is that? And uh, he was, he put it on pretty bad. <laughs> I got you. Did he keep that dog till it died? Never or? Till she died. I got you. Now, are these dogs, I know that some are and some aren't, but in general speaking, are these dogs tight, tight to the tree, or they come off a tree and look up, or, or how does that work? They're, don't look up the tree is what I've always breathed for. You can get an occasionally get a dog that, that don't treat up on the tree, but 
I'm going to say 85% of them is feet on the tree. I got you. Now, oh. I don't know where they go. Obviously, if you let them get away with it, they'd probably be a little looser. But I see, and that's a, my, I'm not a dog trainer. I don't have a shot collar. I don't have nothing. People do this, do that. Yeah. And what I got is pretty well natural ability. He, he does it on his own. Uh, I don't even have a dog jump on the tailgate that shows you how good a dog trainer I am, but. If you come there and go hunting, I guarantee you I got a squirrel dog. Yes, sir. I got you. What about, uh, have you ever heard of anybody hunting anything besides squirrel or coon with your line? No, that's most of them. Some people uh, use them all hunting because uh, they're, really, they're really good about about grabbing a hog, nipping a hog, and staying out of his way like getting cut. I've never had a dog cut by a hog. Real athletic. And that's not the case with these bigger dogs. About two months ago, we went down here on a bad hog. And had a boy with a mountain cur dog killed in about 45 minutes. Well. Uh, coons, uh, they will tree bears. i got a guy in northern Port Arkansas. He's bought about five puppies now old. The person he had, I think she treated five, five to eight bears by herself. Dang, that's pretty good for a. Uh, yeah, well, we're going, going squirrel hunting, treating bears. <laughs> uh, oh, he was not wanting to tree bears. No, he wasn't wanting to tree them. Huh? So he went to tree squirrels and ended up a bear in the tree. I think I'd be uh, leashing and moving on pretty quick. Yeah, we actually got it. This coming fall, the first bear season we've had in this county. Really? I know we have some, a few over here in the Delta, but we don't have a season for them. I know I've, I've got a cousin that has a place down there in the Delta, and he actually had some on his trail camera, and he called the biologist or whatever it is, and they – track them somehow and they gave him the name of it and said it was actually the biggest one they had on record but i tell you what it'll make you think before you walk in the dark going deer hunting oh yeah yes down here what makes you think walking in the dark we big bow holes about five inches teeth sticking out on both sides yeah that we got some we got some hogs but we you know i don't think we have near the population y'all have so, we got a pile of them. <laughs> well, I hope we don't get that many. Let me put it like that. Oh. But my boy with the height of my youngest son, I got I got one son, Lane Mullins, little Edmonton, so I got one Chance Mullins. He lives, he lives here. He's 28. Not one in Tennessee, he's 48. Uh, but the baby, as I call him, he killed 28 hogs. With a muzzle loader, a high power rifle last year. Just deer hunting, or was he actually hog hunting? No, he deer hunting. Mm, you got a problem. 28 hogs, yeah. <laughs> we got them, buddy. I mean, we got them. Uh, and you spin them out, you get them pretty well knocked down, what you think, and they right back. You know, there's. There's people up and down places that don't want anybody in their hog hunt with the dogs and all that kind of stuff. And just a little, once you send them out and them hogs, they'll find a way. Look here, here's some, here's some good food down here. Not many hogs on it, so they move right on in, you know. Yes, sir. Well, let's get back to these mullins. What's your favorite dog you've ever seen go? Can you name it? Favorite dog that I've owned? It, it, it can be anybody's that you've ever seen. We can actually do both. What's the favorite Mullins you've ever owned? And then next, we're going to do the favorite 
that you've ever seen go? Well, I mean, my, my favorite dog was the old sleep dog. He just, he was, had it all. Uh, squirrel produced himself a gun, had a head full of sense on him, uh, throw good dogs and all. Uh, and Wade Hildebrand's got a dog over there called Diesel, the son out of him, that he would probably be about the best thing you've ever seen huh? Uh, especially squirrel hunting. You know, I, I know he's won a bunch of competition stuff. But you talking about Diesel or the son out of Diesel? diesel. Do what now? Now you're talking about the, about the best one you've seen go. You said the son out of Diesel no, or the Diesel? Son out of those six, um, okay, yeah. Which is Diesel? Wade Hill brand. I was yes, sir. Solid red dog. Yes, sir. He's won several world championships. He won a bunch of stuff. He, yeah, he, oh, but he a squirrel dog. I mean, he, he, no nonsense squirrel dog. You can kill squirrels or, uh, just get tired of killing. I had a buddy that we got separated one evening. Uh, Alan Todd was hunting with, got with Wade and I was hunting with Shane. And our dog got separated, and he said, I was actually dragging my shotgun when I got back to the truck. He said, I had it by the strap, I had it unloaded, and he said, I was just sort of dragging it behind me. He had too many squirrels, huh? He said, I was scared I couldn't put it to my shoulder. (laughs) I think we had 72 in the picture that evening. Wow. So you're Shane Mason and Wade Hildebrand's cameraman? Is that what you're telling me? No, no, I don't do much for camera work for <laughs> Well, I'm always seeing these squirrels laid on these trees. Yeah, yeah, that's like, that's, they like to take them tree preachers. I, I went with Wade, me, Wade, my, my son, and his best buddy, we went one morning, 11 o'clock, we had, we, we had 48, we had, it was 12 apiece. Uh, wow. That was with his, that was with his postman dog. And I took postman's daughter, uh, mama, I'm sorry, a dog called Pepper. And uh, at like 11 o'clock, we had 48. We had to look for a tree long enough to put all up on. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. That It also sounds like uh, you need a lot of shells. Y'all shooting them shotguns and 22s? Uh, I, I carry 22 all the time. I'm the... I guess I'm the mover. If something's in a tree, I'll try to make a move for them. And, uh, them uh, the rest of them shoot shotguns. They buy shotgun shells. They don't buy them by the case. They buy them by the pallet. <laughs> Hang on now. Hang on now. I want to get this on record. Yep. Does Wade Hildebrand use a shotgun? Yes, he does. <laughs> I seen him trolling somebody not too long ago about using a Anything but a twenty two. Yeah, he does. <laughs> the shotgun. Okay, we got this on record from Mr. Jody yeah. Mullins. Wade Hildebrand uses a shotgun. A shotgun. <laughs> I've never seen him use a twenty two. Don't tell that no. lie. Come on now. He might have changed in his, in his <laughs> older years. He changed he started riding a horse. Uh Well, I will say this. I have seen in some videos he's put on Facebook, him and his daughter, they're using a twenty two and they're riding horses. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Him and his dad, all of them ride They try to get me to go with riding one a horse and a motorcycle exactly the same thing. What's that? No difference. When are you going to get hurt? (laughs) <laughs> and how mad is she going to get hurt? I'm sure as, bra- as broke as their horses are, they probably put an extra saddle on the back of it, and you can just ride double. Oh, he said I, he's got one. He said I can ride him, ride him backwards and shoot a cannon off his head and all kinds of stuff. But hey, I ain't going to keep that sucker falling in a hole and breaking my neck when I hit the ground. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I wish we had big, big timber like that. It'd be a lot of fun to hunt off of My dog has never seen a fence. I'm talking about a woven wire fence. You took you keep a cow in. 
Occasionally in the woods, you'll find an old hog fence that's uh, back in the old, old days. Hey, the fence up an area uh, to hold some hogs in, three foot tall or something, you know. But they've never seen a fence, never seen a black top road. Well, that that show is handy. Like I said, I'd love to be able to hunt off of a horse or a mule. I think it'd be a lot of fun. But well, what about, so, uh, Showstopper, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. What about, so, Showstopper Diesel and Showstopper Triple Slick Traveler are some of the more known dogs in the competition world. Is there any other yeah. dogs out of the Mullins line that, I don't know about or that you might know about that compete? That... I don't really know. Uh, like I said, I, I've never competition hunt. I, I don't really. The only reason I keep up with them is because they my hunt buddies, you know. Uh, I'm sure that all they are, there's a dog in North Carolina that just won the uh, North Carolina State Hunt and that NSD Money Hunt, uh, his name is Quickies Leroy Gibbs out of Mullins. Do you know that's the his, owner? That's his whole title that boy puts on him. What, what's the owner's name? Hold on, I'll fly the key. Okay. I've got it wrote down here in my big book. Uh, I raised him out of... The prim female I got, I got a dollar called Miss Prim. Mm-hmm. Actually, she's the litter bait, the traveler, and postman. So the dog that just won that hunt, it's out of, Quick, its mama Quick. is out of the traveler litter. What now? So the dog that that quick dog that just won the hunt. It's mama. It is out of Prim, Miss Prim, a female I raised. Uh huh. And I sold this puppy that boy in North Carolina. Hold on, I'll tell you what the guy's name is. Now, you said Prim was out of the she, same litter as Traveler? Yeah, she's a litter mate to Traveler. Okay. And a litter mate to Postman. And a litter mate to, I got a dog I call Poison. Super, super nice dog. Throwing some sure enough good dog. Yes, sir. I got you. Here he is. Well, I don't know. Hold on. That's another guy in North Carolina. Mike London. Mike London. So Mike London's hunting a, a dog, a quick dog that's off the moat. They call him, they call him Quickies Leroy Gibbs of Mullins. I got you. That's a I pretty long name. That. That's on, on, the, on his little, all right, I got a book. I keep on all this stuff. He said, he called me 1 7 to 21. He said, hey, I just talked to you about my dog. He said, he's a, he's just something. He said, he's super. He said, I went to hunt with two guys today with two broke dogs. He said, the first time this dog opened his mouth, he was 700. Sounds like a heck of a dog there. Yeah. Not, yeah he's he's making some he's making some, yes, some uh, money hunts from from his he was a dog the MSDA dog of the year in the money hunts. And won the North Carolina State Hunt. Nice. He's a red with white trim dog, looks like his mama. Uh, He's in the back of full cry. I can't remember. I don't remember what pulled the switch. 
So that last bump, maybe the month before. He was in the back of the full crowd last month at the month yeah, before. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one second. 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 Page 80 of the May 2022 full cry. Full cry. Okay. That, for the people that listen in the future, they, this is 2022. And he's the NKC, uh, the NC Hunt champion North Carolina State. Nice. Sounds like a heck of a dog. So that that's three pretty notable dogs out of the Mullins for sure. That, that have competition hunted. And the only reason I say that is I guess that's how dogs get their name out there is, is competition, you know. It, it is. Uh, and like I say, I've I never done any of it. And I'll give you the reason. I, I, I thought I was, all right, yeah, I'll do this. I went to hunt, got out with a guy that morning, super nice guy. Uh, and then... That evening I drawed out, and I didn't know anything about the rule book, but I knew he was a crook, and I knew I was getting hoodooed. And when the guide, the, the guide was riding with me, and when he got back in the truck that evening, he said, listen, he said, everything that guy done was wrong. But he said, nothing he done wasn't out of the rule book. He said everything he done was legal. So he was. He said it ain't right. Yeah. Yeah. He said it wasn't none of it right. And he said I wouldn't take his dog. Oh, he said I wouldn't have a hundred of them for your dog. But he rode. He rode my dog and won the hunt off of her. Forty something dogs in her. Dang. Yeah, that them rules, you know. It, well, this dog was a babbler. He had he babbled all the time. He babbled here and then he babbled there and he babbled. Any time you're in the air where there's a squirrel, at, he babble, babble, babble. Second, my dog sitting down the tree. That squirrel first her first bark at him. Out he all tree my dog. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. a tough situation there. But on the other yeah. side of the coin, I mean. Now, day and time, I guess there's Facebook and internet and all, but other than that, that's really how people, I don't know that it's the correct way, but that's how most people judge how good a dog is, is by if it's winning. Well, you're exactly right. You know, and I don't know that that's the right way. I'm just saying that's how people, you know, judge a good dog from a bad dog in their opinion. That, uh. Like that dog up there, tell me about it. He's he won, he won a bunch of stuff. He's absolutely not worth thirty five dollars. <laughs> I mean, just, just if the guy went hollering and pointing with his finger or had pointing with his walking stick, sucker wouldn't even stay on the tree. And uh, it was, it was, a, it was a. But I said, listen, I'm. I have a good time. I said, I had a good time this morning, had a bad time this evening, and I'll never get caught again. I might stick my hand in a barrel and a rattlesnake bite me one time. But you can bet I'll never stick my hand in another barrel and get bit again. Yes, sir. I understand that aspect of it. I enjoy the the atmosphere a lot of people like to talk about dogs and and it's a good time you know when that stop clock comes on i'm a competitive person also but you know there's a difference in being competitive and not not doing the right thing if you will that's exactly right i I like going to when they have these hunts around here and stuff i'll go shoot i'll spend the day buy raffle crickets have a good time and bull session. 
it's a lot of fun. I like going, you know? Yes, sir. What about, how have you noticed a difference in the way hunting's been since you started in the 70s to now, uh, other than technology? I mean, is there anything in particular that stands out to you? Maybe the way dogs hunt or um, anything like that? Well, now, like I say, all the technology is unbelievable now, what these guys use. Uh, I, I don't think in the old days we hunted as hard and stuff as we do now with all the internet stuff. That, uh, we put all those pictures up. I'm saying we and other people too. Uh, you know, we, we put those big pictures up and people... People are doing it all, and, and, and the haters show oh, how the world can you know, use all those squirrels, and what are you going to do with them? Every one of those squirrels is this process. Somebody wants them, you know, and uh, you're going to kill all the squirrels in the country. Well, I, I hunt the same woods, and I kill eight, 900 squirrels practically every year uh, until the squirrel have a dial. They'll have it. We'll, about every seven or eight years, we'll have a dial. We'll have a really a low mass crop, and we'll have a low number. But the next year, it'll bounce right back. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, if your dog trees, what's the limit in Arkansas? We can kill twelve squirrels apiece in Arkansas. Twelve and squirrels apiece. Open now. Our season opens May the fifteenth. Runs to the end of February. Yes, sir. I'm I'm pretty jealous of that. In Mississippi, it comes in October 1st till February 28th, and then there's a 15 day in May for us. But I'd love for it to come in. It actually is May 15th to June 1st. I wish ours yeah. kept on going. But so, do you hunt all year long? I do not hunt any in the summertime. You don't hunt any in the summertime. None. Now oh, I wait good weather. In fact, I had puppies that was going to be picked up last Friday. I weaned a chip from them Thursday evening and was going to get the shot the next evening. I went out there Thursday night about 9 o'clock to check on them, make sure they had good fresh water. And I had one snake get the pen. A big, fat, beautiful puppy. Black, big, square headed sucker. And it it took him. It took him four hours to die, but that was a. It was a miserable fighting for him. I was, ho- I was hoping he don't make it. But yes, sir. Now, when you are hunting, That's in the yard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got you. Now, when you are hunting, do you do y'all kill them all, or if y'all have so many squirrels and y'all tree so many? Like, if you tree ten, are you killing every other? Or if we, it's no, Look, we kill them as we get to them. Okay, I didn't know if you, if you was like, man, I know we're gonna tree a bunch. I'm not gonna kill, but every other today, and if that's you know, tree twenty, you kill ten. Yeah, when them hunting in the summer, they'll hunt when it's 105 degrees out there. I mean, they're tough. Yes, sir. Uh, they don't hardly kill any squirrels in the summer. They'll just kill just. Something to the dog, you know, every occasion. I got you. They hunt a bunch of alligator country, too, so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty scary there. They have, they have to be a little bit careful. I got you. I had a few more questions for you. One of them was, how often are you breeding dogs right now, this day and time? How often do I breed? Yes, sir. I mean, is this still a, a busy time, or are you slacking off, or... Yes, it's a busy time. I always stay booked on puppies. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I don't raise any winter type puppies anymore. I've got, I just, uh, we're in the duck hunting pretty big over in the Delta, but so I don't want to have to get out and feed them puppies every morning and every night. And uh, so, I cut out the, this winter is the first year I've done it. Don't want puppies dying, a heat bug going out on them or something. Yes, so, sir. I breed, 
know, a lot of people think I run a puppy mill. I don't. The pepper dog out here is one of the best dogs I've ever seen. I raised two litters off of her, and she's probably nine years old. Uh, that's the gator, that's the mama to the traveler dog and postman and poison and prism. And, uh, I just don't run to death, you know. Uh, but the good crosses, the ones that re- I really like, I just keep making that. I make that same cross. I don't experiment on them any. You know, I don't move them to a different stud. Yeah. Uh, when I hit the one that really clicks, I stay with it. Now, are you, how old does My a dog, old dog go ahead. retired? The old dog is, you know, just old retired dog. Uh, I give them a home to the guy, you know, unless I got a good friend or something that wants to take one of them and hunt them, you know. Yeah. Now, at what age does a puppy have to, do you raise puppies as far as starting them or are you just breeding? No, I can't. I can't ever keep anything long enough to start. Uh, <laughs> if I keep something that's for me, I'm not going to sell it. Uh, uh, for a long time ago, don't put a price on something because there's, there's crazy people out there, too. You know? Yes, sir. Now, but when I you're raising raise. a puppy, what, what at age, what, at what age does it have to be doing something before you just move on? Me? Yes, sir. I'm going to give one a chance because uh, the, one of the best dogs I've ever seen in my life never got off the back porch until he's 15 months old. and run loose every day of his life. And, uh, but when he started, he started like a, a gangbuster, too. But I've had a lot of good starting young dogs. And when I say young, I'm talking... I'm talking about tree and wild squirrel. I'm not talking, when I say tree and, I'm not talking about barking at something in a cage or barking at a dead squirrel on the end of the cane pole. I'm talking about yeah. tree and squirrels, wild squirrels. It's not turning loose in front of them. I've had them start a bunch of them before this four months old. Nice. But you, you're going to give them a chance, so. Yes. Especially when they're bred right, and I know it. And my son had a little dog here. Uh, her name is Piper. You see her in a bunch of them pictures from down there around uh, Texas County, Louisiana area. She's got a half of a white face. Uh, at nine months old, I seen her lay on the front porch. And just perk her ears up when a squirrel went across the yard at nine months old. Hmm. I told my boy, I said, your, your dog's never going to. I said, I don't even think she's ever going to treat a squirrel. At 15 <laughs> months old, he sold her for $3,500. Wow. Uh, and that's how quick one wanted to come on. I mean, his girlfriend wanted to run in here a few days after that nine months old deal and Says, Piper, get a gun. Piper's treated a squirrel out here. I said, no, I went out there and she both feet on a tree, tree and every breath. Good, nice. Spit them out a little faster. <laughs> I got you. So, uh, you said that you have a list. I always have a puppy list. So, is it, is it stay pretty, pretty busy or do you make sure that it's full before you breed? No, I, I take a list. No matter these, a lot of these people will, will book a puppy, knowing I'm not going to raise anything for five or six months. You know, uh, and, and I have been at as far as three years behind sometimes. Uh, wow! I, I, I just try. I don't want to get that far behind, but, but sometimes I do. But I usually stay six months to a year behind, something like that. I got you. At what age do you normally wait to start breeding dogs, trying to see if they're going to reproduce? Do you have uh, an age limit? I never breed anything before they're at. I want them two years old, if not maybe a little bit older. Okay. So almost three or older is what you're saying? Yeah, two, two and a half, three years old is what, what I really like. To and, and even the dogs that... That I'm hunting really hard, and 
not going to breed. I still want them to raise. I want to raise a litter of puppies off of them uh, when they're two or three years old. Even if I might not raise any to their six or seven years old, but it just makes always it seemed like to me it's made them easier for them to have puppies later on in life. You know. Now that's male and female, or do you have different for? No. A male, I'll breed a male a lot younger than I'll breed a female. Okay. If I got a male here I really like, uh, I might breed him when he's, when he's a year old. Okay. If I'm, if I, if I'm really, really, I got a male down here now, a male puppy. Uh, I'm pretty well, I'm stuck on him. And, uh, <laughs> he's a, uh, He's going to he's gonna be something on the future. He'll probably be my last firehouse dog. Now, do you have to, what does a dog have to do to show you that you want to breed it? Or is it just a thing that you're going to try one time and see what it works? Yeah, yeah I want, I, but show me, first off, they got to meet my standards. And, and I've got pretty high standards on a dog, you know, big mouth. Big motor, want to smart. I want them smart every week. Somebody calls me, never fails at least one or maybe more. Hey, it's the smartest dog I've ever had in my life. I've had dogs for 50 years. Uh, just so one last week, one of them puppies that snake, snake bit, bro. He had one for 15 years. And They've had squirrel dogs their whole life. Him and both his brothers. He's about fifty-five years old. The best, the best that he's ever had. He he was fifteen when he died, and hunted him, hunted him last year. Heck, that's pretty good. So pretty good. So how many? Yeah, my da- brother had one. If 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 he'd have been three months older, he'd been twenty-two when he died. Dang. That's an old man, uh, wasn't he? I kept one. The old Tuck Light dog died. He was 18 when he died. Slick and Pup, the two dogs that you see a lot of them squirrel feeder videos, they was, both of them was 15 when they died. Huh. I got you. Now, how often are you hunting during, during like you said you don't hunt during the summer, so I assume you start in October, November? Oh, November, late November. Right. Around Thanksgiving, you How often are you hunting when you start hunting? Well, I'll hunt, like, say, every day if I find somebody to hunt with. Uh, down here, you got to have a hunt. It, it, it's hard on two people to hunt. You, you're not going to kill a lot of squirrels. Timber's so big, and you got to pull vines, and I'll make a move, but you got a couple people with you, three of you, you can do pretty good. But I like to hunt three times a week or four times a week, whatever I can get something like that, somebody to go. Yeah. Are y'all hunting one dog at a time, or y'all t- cut multiple dogs? I want, I want everybody to have a dog in the race. If you come down here, I want you to hunt your dog. I'm going to hunt my dog. We'll get another buddy, we'll Shane, or whoever. Well, they going to hunt a dog. I want... I want all of them out there to where they can sort of compare to each other, you know. Yeah. Now, in that situation, do y'all go to the first one that treed, or do y'all walk to them closest to farthest? How does that work? No. We get them as we go up to them. If, they, if we've got three dogs blow out there and there's one at 100 yards, one at 200, and one at 500, we go to the one, two, three, five, you know. Okay. I didn't know if, if one at 200 treed. And as y'all was walking to it, the one treed right in front of you, if y'all went on past it to the one that treed first, or if y'all went ahead and knocked uh, we, that one out. We make it easy on us. Are y'all we chaining? We're going to stay treed. We ain't going to we gonna have to worry about any time on them. Are y'all tying onto tree? No, I never tie a dog at a tree. You never tie a dog at a tree. Now, do, you, do y'all let them back each other? Do what now? Are you letting them back each other? I, I, I'm not understanding. Are you letting them back each other? Like a uh, yeah. tree on the same tree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
these dogs, uh, you will never have any trouble with dogs. I've got videos of three male dogs treeing together, dogs walking under each other, and one walk under the other bed where he's standing tree put his feet right beside him, and uh, you'll never have any growls, any fight. I got you. Well, I was just really asking because obviously you're pleasure hunting, but I didn't know if you hunted anybody that you said you hunt with Shane and Wade. You know, they competition hunt, and they really probably don't want their dogs back. And I didn't know if y'all if they tried to yeah. keep them from a lot that. Of people or, don't. Yes, sir. So, how many dogs do you have at your house right now? Bunch. Uh, Count airhead on the place. I've got twenty five. Twenty five. Now, how many pup does do you do you keep a certain amount of old dogs? Yeah, I keep. I'm not. I'm not counting any puppies. I don't have any puppies right now. Oh, so that's that's twenty five head of big dogs. Yeah, twenty five big dogs. Okay. Now, are they all yours, or do you partner, or how does that work? Yeah. Shane has got a male dog up here. Uh, Shane Mason, he raised that. Shane that raised my dog probably 14, 15 years. Uh, Called him Swagger. Uh, he's an escape artist. And he raised him out of my old dogs. Uh, and he's, uh, you, you can't keep him up. I mean, he just can't, he can't be kept up, but I had some. Nice kennels built. A guy up here in Fort Dice built some jay legs up off the ground. Uh, they got like the bull panels, tops on them. Yes, sir. Uh, they can't chew out or dick nothing. I mean, he's there, you know. And so I kept him. I brought him up here to use him in, uh, about four years ago, and he's been here ever since. I got you. So, other than that, the rest of them are yours, or do you partner? Yes, they're all mine. Okay. Well, right now, Shane got a few people he's breeding, uh, but they're all mine. Now, I don't know if you want to say it, but do you keep up with an average about how many puppies you have a year? I I don't keep up with it. I got Uh, you. Those... Four I sold last weekend was the first puppies I've had this year. Hmm. I got you. I didn't raise, like I didn't breathe anything for winter or early spring cold puppies. Yes, sir. It's just too hard. It's too hard on the old man. If somebody wanted to buy a pup, how would they go about getting on the list or getting a hold of you? I don't know. If you want to put that out there, or really what you want to do about that? Yeah, people people call me all the time and get on the list. Well, uh, do you want to do you want to put that out there right now, or do you want me to edit this out? It, it don't make any difference. Well, to me. Uh, t- tell us how to, how to get a hold of you uh, to get on a list. All right, uh, I've got a house phone. Don't have a cell phone. It's one eight. Seven zero five seven four zero nine six three. And I'm retired, so you can call pretty well any time. Okay. And I'll, I'll try to get you fixed up quick, quick as I can with the. Yes, sir. So with the best cross I can. So primarily by telephone. There now I know y'all have a Mullins Feist facebook page and i also know you don't have i don't think you have a computer either do you so i don't have a computer don't have a cell phone so it's safe to say you don't have facebook oh yeah <laughs> phone, phone is how to get to me yes sir so phones by how to get with you and and i think i heard that shane also responds to messages for you on the mullins facebook he, page he does i don't want people think i've got a uh, computer they go on there and have, they'll ask me something and he'll go on there and tell them to call me or something you know well i i had sent you to try to line this up an email and i was like i don't i heard you didn't have 
a phone. I was like, well, uh, a cell phone or a computer. So I was like, I better call you and see if you was interested. Oh, people always get a cell phone right now. With a house phone, I have to take a house phone with me when I go use the bathroom. So if I had a cell phone, I never would get nothing done, you know. Oh, I understand. I understand. It's uh, it's it handicaps us, but technology sure is nice. It's handy. Oh, I, I work up with a computer every day. I I didn't get burned out. Everything I done was on the computer. I said the day I retire. If I make it to January the 6th, I'm never going to open the page on a computer or look at a computer again. <laughs> and that was like years ago, and I haven't. Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, I don't I don't know that I could go back to hunting like you do without a garment. I like to know which direction they are. And <laughs> Well, I've seen one time in my life I've always said it. If I've got a dog too stupid to come back find me, I don't want him anyway. Let him get gone. <laughs> so, if I've got one that goes so far, I got to go in there and track him in there half a mile so far ahead. But just let him tree. He'll eventually come back. I'm going to hunt this direction, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. I, I had a dog dig down and track the pepper chip. She dug down in a hole, dug herself in, and I had to cut roots with a pocket knife and chop with a pocket knife. Got myself down in the hole with my feet sticking out, and I had two guys get a hold of my boots. I finally got her by a hind leg, and they drug me out holding on to the dog, and I, she had done seal herself in. Hey, how'd you? But she had been dead. If, if, if a guy hadn't been right there and seen her go in that hole it would it'll been over with she'd been dead well i was wondering how you how y'all saw her go i guess y'all saw her go in that makes sense i seen yeah. i saw not too long ago a logging company had cut open a tree and there was a some sort of i don't know it might not even been real but it looked like a dog had got stuck in a tree maybe a coon dog when it in a hollow tree oh, baby. so Oh, hey, oh, anytime you turn a dog loose, anything can happen. I mean, that's some strange stuff can happen. Uh, uh, my buddy from North Carolina come down here and hunted, bought that really good gift he, he had, old sissy down here. And we just hunted in the woods. I mean, we just wide open woods. And she come back and I said, good dog, Jimmy. I said, oh, take call your dog. Man, it looked like you'd hit her across the front of her chest and her leg with a machete. Dang. You could see that big giant vein running up and down her leg. I mean, we took her to the... I said, don't, just go. We got everything loaded, took her to the vet, and the vet said, hey, if it nicked that right there, that artery, said, she'd never come back to you, you know, unless you're standing right there looking at her. She said, you she'd have bled to death two or three minutes, you know. Hey. And I still don't know what she's cut on. I, I can't imagine how how she was cut there. Well, no fences, no, just wood, you know. Yes, sir. But it had to be a short, a short stick or something, you know, broke or a piece of a tree fell out or something. I, don't, I ain't got any idea. But where it is, huh? he done drove 15 hours down here to hunt about a week. Had a dog laid up. Yeah, that's a tough situation to drive that for. And you dog yeah. hurt. Yeah, I got, I mean, a, a sure enough nice dog. Oh, uh, she only raised two litter of puppies her whole life. Well, I got one last. I really sort of a waste, but. Yes, sir. I, I got some good ones out of it. Well, I got one last question. And I, if you need a few minutes to think about it, I'll let it out. But is there one hunting story that sticks out to you that you'll never forget? And you might not have one. I just, I just thought I'd ask. You know, Cody, I've had so many super squirrel hunts. I, 
there's just so many of my. I guess one of the best ones was when I was telling you about my buddy was dragging his gun with Wade. And, uh, yes, sir. We, we was in squirrels that evening is the best I've ever seen. It. I mean, had, had had some young people with us. And, uh, it was it, it was a show. I mean, it was it was actually a, we had to have two trucks to put all the squirrels on side to side. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a super time, big time. You know, we have a good time. Uh, no drinking, no cussing much. Yes, sir. And, uh, you take, we take kids with us, young people, and, uh, and just have a big time. That's what it's about for me. It sure is. It sure is. Well, Mr. Jody, I think I've kept you long enough, and this, this is all about you. Is there anything I missed that you'd like to talk about on these dogs or that you'd like to talk about in general? Man, I told you I don't know anything. Like me, I just I just like for everybody to, to have a good dog, you know. Have, have a real dog uh, and, and give you a to sort of set your goals to, you know, people say, well, that, that dog, he he's goes too far, this don't go far, no, hey, just have a really a good one, and one you can really enjoy and have pleasure with, uh, take the kids, take the grandkids, you know, that's what it's about to make it, it's made a, a puppy that has a good chance of making a really a nice dog uh, there. There's so much junk out here, people, and I hear it every week. It's just nightmare stories, you know. Yes, sir. I've done put, I've done put two years in this dog, and he won't even bark up a tree. Uh, he'll tree a squirrel, but he won't bark. It's. I feel sorry for these people because they've just spent bought a two hundred, three hundred dollar puppy and got all that time and effort in him and don't have nothing, you know. Yeah. I'm with you. One one thing I didn't well, ask it. is well, no, you, you gonna have a few of them, that's for sure. Yes, sir. One thing I didn't ask is is what do you have a set price for a puppy, or do you does that vary? I get I get, get five hundred dollars a puppy. Five hundred a puppy. Okay, I didn't know if different crosses varied in price or no, no. male, female, different crosses don't make. Uh, don't make make any difference. But five hundred a puppy, and at this moment, do you have an idea of how far you're out? Today is June the sixteenth of twenty twenty two. Would you have an I'm idea? Probably out, of, probably out about five or six months. Five or six months in June the sixteenth of twenty twenty two. Now, if you listen to this in twenty twenty three and. Mr. Jody's still fooling with these dogs. That time might be different. I hope I'm still kicking. Well, I hope you are too. And that's the reason I got you on here is we had several requests for you. And, you know, if this stuff isn't documented, then it just gets lost. Two sons and neither one of them is going to take this over. So uh, I don't know who will end up with. They kill on these dogs, but... Yes, sir. Well, you know... It, I hope that somebody do them justice, you know. I got you. Well, if everybody enjoyed the same thing, you know, everybody drive the same truck and live in the same kind of house, hunt, <laughs> hunt the I same dog. Like the people, I, I got a buddy. He, he likes... These little, I call them hip hip dogs. You know, hip 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 hip. hip, hip. <laughs> he, he just loves it. Is that what is that? Atomic Feist? Yeah, I, a little old red hair, like I call them. And uh, he loves it. He wants to watch them. And he wants to hear that little high pitched yell. Well, I think I. I find a great guy and hang myself if I had to listen to that all the time, you know? <laughs> well, it takes all kinds. It takes it all does. kinds. Hey, a lot of people don't want to hunt up the big dog, you know? Well, uh, 
I fell oh, into the I curve. Did weigh forty pounds? Yes, sir. You know. Well, I fell into the curves because right. that's what everybody I knew that was hunting them. And it's just kind of, you know, if everybody you knows riding a Harley motorcycle, you're probably going to buy a Harley motorcycle. But I like a smaller dog in preference. Like, I like a smaller cur dog. My cur dog is 33 pounds, 34 pounds. And yeah. he he gets through and there pretty good, you know. I, I, I'm an old, old fella. Uh, I remember... I was raised with mountain curs in Tennessee. I know what they look like, you know? Yes, sir. Big old rough-looking son of a gun, 55, 60 pounds, female, weigh 40, 45. Could do a little bit of everything. A tree a squirrel, tree a groundhog, tree a some of everything, you know? But they was a master at none. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, and then they've changed them over the years to some of these suckers are squirrel dogs now. I mean, they changed it to uh, practically overnight, you know. Yes, sir. I think Carl Smith was the was the first one. I actually have tried to get Mister Carl on. He's still pondering on it, you know. I a lot of people scared of of the a podcast it can be used for different things i'm wanting to get the information out there to the people from the the way the person that like yourself i want your information told the way you want it told i'm not trying to to change anything up it's your words and the way you want it said you know and a lot of people that don't understand that think that i might be trying to trick them or, or do whatever i'm not trying to do that i'm just trying to to put the information out there because like I said, you know, if, if something happens and, and it's not documented, the only people that's going to know it's the people that's the closest to you. And then if they don't document it, then it's going to be lost forever. Oh, yes. So. And, and like, this one kind of dog, somebody could, could buy these dogs from my wife and say, well, you know, I really like these, but I'm going to cross I'm going to take this dog right here and cross in with these dogs. Well, they're gone. Well, they're gone. They'll never be the same again. That's it. It's over, you know? Yes, sir. I well, got you. You can, like, so just overnight, the whole the whole family can be gone, you know? Well, you, you never know. The most dangerous thing we do every day is getting in vehicles, and you never know. Oh, what are you talking about? It's a... Uh, so. You can, I had a, I had a terrible wreck years ago in Tennessee. But I wonder everybody thought I did when they seen the vehicle. But hey. It can be over in Hartley. Yes, sir. I, I right before we get off the phone, are you still coon hunting anymore? No, no. Gave up on uh, them old coons. The only coons I kill now are are daytime coon deep dog tree. When we tree them, pretty well every day hunt, but. I've, I've tried to keep these boys unless somebody's wanting them from shooting them out, you know. Uh, yes, sir. You shoot possums out? Because, you know, we're bad <laughs> on possums. <laughs> Y'all shoot them old possums out? Look at that. My boy's a big turkey hunter, my baby boy. And, oh, he he hates the possum. He said, there's big predators on the We don't have any turkeys. All the dang possums. We look. Two different trips last year. Like, we didn't have any big trips. Uh, the most squirrels we kill. We kill two different trips. We kill four possums each day. <laughs> now, do they do your boys hunt with you, or are they just they not really into uh, my it? My oldest boy lives in. He lives in Lebanon, Tennessee. He's oh, okay. A, he's a, a police officer. Uh, oh, actually, God. he's a trainer now, police department. I'm He's not a big hunter, big pistol shooter. I, I baby hunts all the time. We're in a we're in a duck leash together, and uh, he likes to do all kinds of hunting, deer hunting, hog hunting. He does it all. You ain't got them feist out there retrieving them ducks, do you? Uh, no, but you know what, Stains? Every one of these dogs we've ever fooled with, and most of them, 
like Shane and Wade fools with, every one of them retrieves. I've seen they'll the videos. Water, yeah, they'll water retrieve. They'll go across water. I mean, one, uh, I had old dogs swarm some bad water. One fell out on the backside of a big cypress tree, and, uh, and that guy couldn't believe it. He said, that, I, I said, she heard it when he hit the hit the water over, you know? Yes, sir. And man, she went right to that squirrel and swam around behind that tree and come right out with him. Uh, her name was Jolene. I have seen... Uh, uh, I've, I've seen Shane's puppy, videos, for sure. Yeah, the male puppy I got in the yard right now, uh, ready loose, uh, or running loose sometimes. Uh, that sucker retrieved on the first time I throw something for him. He went and got it and brought it right back to me like a lamb. My boy's got two lambs. Uh, we got a lamb, tree squirrel, bee hogs, retrieve every dozen goose you kill. Labs do? You got some labs as tree and squirrels? Yep. He won't let her, he won't, well, he won't pack her in the woods. Scared she'd get killed on a hog. She loves a hog. Heck. He said the hardest thing in the world to kill is a, a black hog with a black dog bay in it and pitch dark. Going to the nut black. I said, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know which one you're shooting. Yeah, he, he, she had about three hogs made up. I couldn't figure out what the hog, what she was. Shooting out in front of a ranger with a headlight off a ranger. Hmm. It sounded like it was in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, it's always. Well, if something happens to her, we're going to have to have a bear. We're going to have to bury my wife, I guess, with her. Oh, Lord. She's a snake killing thing, too, boy. She'll kick five and every snake and kill every one of them around. Sounds like you need to start a Mullins lab line. Yeah, this big lab is too much, too much. Too much training for me. He's got this little nine we go and she'll she'll retrieve and set and does all kinds of stuff already. Hey. I got you. All these dogs man old snakes, these fast dogs there. Uh, it's just bread in them, I guess. They they hate a snake. Yes, sir. Slang, they have to slang them, slang them, slang them, you know. They, they real gritty. Most of the fights I've seen is real, real gritty. Yeah, a little too great. Some guy even walked up and said, well, you can take away one thing. And I said, I, I make them have a backup switch. I'm like, well, when, when to run, you know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. They don't, they don't know. They think they're as big and as bad as a big as four hogs in the woods, you know? Yes, sir. It gets them in trouble sometimes, though. I sure would like to. I might be one of them that only puts my puts my dog back in the box at lunchtime and don't don't get him back out. Ah, uh, uh, we we ain't hunting enough to do that to you. <laughs> well, I sure appreciate this, Mister Jody, and and if you don't have anything <laughs> else, I'm gonna let you go. All right, man. Mister Jody, I sure appreciate you coming on. We've been on here a while, and we've talked about a little bit of everything, and and. I really admire the Mullins Feist. I think it's a heck of a dog that you've bred over the years, and and I really appreciate you sitting down with me. I appreciate being here. I, I just wish I wasn't so bashful to talk a little more. <laughs> We've had a good time. We hadn't been breathing in each other's ear anyway. So all right, all right.